Microsoft have released the first Windows 11 Insider Preview Beta installation ISO. So we can get this by searching for Windows Insider Preview ISO and then select this using ISO's document and then select download Windows Insider ISO. So it'll prompt you to log in with a Microsoft account. So to the top right, select sign in. And then once you sign in, there's going to be a drop down menu under edition. So this is edition slash version slash channel. So you're going to have the three insider channels, the developer channel, the beta channel, and the release preview channel. And you're going to have consumer versions and enterprise versions, and also Windows 11 and Windows 10. So I'm going to select the Windows 11 inside the preview beta channel installation ISO and I'm going to select English United Kingdom under language. And because Windows 11 is 64 bit only, we'll then be presented with a 64 bit only download. So once the installation ISO is downloaded, you can go to the downloads folder and right click the installation ISO and select mount to view it as a virtual drive. And you can use this to perform an in-place upgrade. Now we can also use this installation ISO to create a bootable USB. Now there's one small snag and that's if we go to the sources folder, we'll see that the installed up WIM file exceeds 4.0 gigabytes. Now 4.0 gigabytes is the upper file limit for the FAT32 file system. And therefore the installed up WIM won't fit on a USB flash drive with a single FAT32 partition. And we need this in order to pass secure boot. So what I'm going to do is insert a 32 gigabyte USB flash drive and then right click the start button and select Windows Terminal Admin and then select the user account control prompt in order to proceed and then the first line we're going to type in is disk part and then we're going to type in list disk and I see that my 32 gigabyte USB flash drive is disk 1 so the next command I'm going to type in is select disk 1 and then I want to remove all data and partitions on it. So I'm going to type in clean. And once this is done, I'm going to have a blank USB flash drive. So now that I've got a blank USB flash drive, I can right click the start button and select disk management. And what I want to do is create two partitions on this USB flash drive, a one gigabyte FAT32 formatted partition, which will be used to create the bootable part of the bootable USB. And then a NTFS partition, which will span the rest of the USB and contain the installation part. So this will contain the installed up WIM file, which is too big to fit on a FAT32 formatted partition due to the upper file size of FAT32. So if I right click the unallocated space and select new simple volume and then specify the size in gigabytes as 1024, which is one gigabyte. And then select next. And then I'm going to assign this the letter I. And then the file system is going to be FAT32. And I'm going to call this volume label boot. And then select next. And then finish. So we see the FAT32 partition now called boot. And if we right click the unallocated space and select new simple volume and let me just select the next drive liner, which is JI. And it has to be the NTFS file system. 
and the volume label is just going to be called install. Okay, so now the USB flash drive is created with a boot FAT32 partition and an install NTFS partition. And we can see it updated in the disk management. And now we can open up the boot partition within Windows Explorer. So let's open this up to the left hand side and let's open up the installation ISO that's mounted to the right hand side. So basically we want to copy everything across except the sources folder. And then in the place of the sources folder, we'll create our own sources folder. And we just want to copy one file from the original sources folder. And that's the boot.wim. And that will give us everything we need in order to boot to the Windows 11 bootable USB. And in order to install Windows 11, what we need to do is copy everything over to the NTFS partition. So this time we're going to copy everything over, including the sources folder, which contains the install.wim, which is needed to install Windows 11. And so our Windows 11 bootable USB is now created. So what I'm going to do is shut down the system and power up and press F2 to enter the Dell UFI BIOS setup. So I'm going to go to boot sequence and I'm going to uncheck the bootable USB and delete any existing old boot entries. Now this is a system that was manufactured in 2017 and has a 7th generation Intel processor. The SATA operation is AHCI and there's a single solid state drive installed. The TPM 2.0 Zero security is enabled and secure boot is enabled. Under maintenance, I'm going to initiate the Dell data wipe. And then I'm going to select apply. So the Dell data wipe will now display as the computer reboots. So I'm going to select continue and then erase. And because it's got an internal solid state drive, it'll be securely wiped within a couple of minutes. Now, if I power up the Dell and press F12, I'll be taken to the UFI BIOS boot menu. And in this boot menu, you can see that the boot mode is set to UFI and secure boot is on. And my Windows 11 bootable USB has been selected. So we'll need to select our language options and then next and then install now. And it's going to search for an OEM embedded product key. And if it finds it, it will take us straight to the license agreement screen. So next we can select custom install and then select our drive, which is unallocated space and then select next. So now it's going to copy all the Windows installation files over and the Windows 11 setup is going to begin. So the out of the box experience setup for Windows 11 has been updated. So the first thing we're going to be asked for is our country or region. So I'm going to select the United Kingdom. And then after this, we're going to be asked for the keyboard layout. So I'm going to select United Kingdom and then skip. Next, we'll be prompted to connect to the internet. So I'm going to select my wireless network and then input my wireless password and then select connect. And then once it's connected, select next. Now we'll be asked for the computer name. So 
I'm just going to call it by the name of the model, which is an Optiplex 7050. And then after this, it's going to reboot. So next we'll be prompted to create our user account and a local account is now a Windows 11 Pro only feature. So you'll be forced to sign in with a Microsoft account on Windows 11 Home. And on Windows 11 Pro, you'll be greatly discouraged from trying to create a local account. So once you've signed in with your Microsoft account, you can select a pin. And then you're going to be asked whether you want to restore your privacy settings from an existing device or set this up as a new device. So I'm going to set this up as a new device. So the first privacy setting is the location setting, and this is useful if you're going to use the maps or whatever. The next privacy setting is the find my device. And this is only really useful if you've got a laptop or mobile device and it's connected to the internet and it's signed in with a Microsoft account. You can log into your Microsoft account and get a view of its approximate location. Next, you'll be asked whether you want to send optional diagnostic data to Microsoft. Then you'll be asked whether you want to send typing data to Microsoft. Next, you'll be asked whether you want to receive tailored diagnostic information from Microsoft. And then you're going to be asked whether apps such as Edge and the Microsoft Store, as well as Microsoft Apps, can all share an advertising ID. So this is essentially to help Microsoft make as much money as possible from you. Then you'll be asked whether you want to customize your experience so you can select uses for your device. So I'm just going to select business. And with Windows 11, it seems that they're not going to pre-install all the annoying games such as Candy Crush, like they did with Windows 10 on a business machine. And the next screen, you'll be asked whether you want to back up your PC using OneDrive. And this is only really useful if you've got an Office 365 account with OneDrive cloud storage. So after you've made your privacy settings selection, it's going to look online for any updated builds for your selected channel. And it's going to go ahead and download and install these. And then you'll be taken to the login screen and be presented with the final stages of the Windows 11 setup screens. So if I right click the start button, and select settings and then Windows Update. I'll see that it lists a lot of system drivers. And if I right click the Start button and go to Device Manager, I can see that I've got a handful of devices which don't have a system driver installed. So you can update them through Windows Update. However, you're most likely going to want to run your OEM's driver update utility. And in the case of a Dell, I'm going to download and install Dell Command Update. So if I search for Dell Command Update, I'm taken to the Dell website. And it's going to take me to the latest version of Dell Command Update, which I can download and install. So I'm going to accept the license agreement and I'm going to participate in the Dell Command Update Experience Improvement Program because it is an insider preview. And it may help Dell with some diagnostic feedback, particularly for a newer build of Windows 11. So once Dell Command Update has been installed, I'll need to restart the computer. And then I can launch Dell Command Update and then select the default run settings. And then I'm going to select to download a complete driver library. So this is going to download the Dell driver package for this system and install all the drivers from the driver pack. Once this is done, I'm going to be prompted for a restart. 
and I'm also going to be instructed to run Dell command update after the restart. And this will search for additional drivers not included in the Dell driver pack yet. So it's found seven more updates, so I'm going to select install. And now that these updates have been downloaded and installed, my system is now up to date. And if I right click the start button and select device manager, I'll now see no errors because all the drivers have been installed.